the 12th study of our Bible, and we're looking at Erasmus, or, or your Erasmus. In 1516, from Pope Leo X, to whom he would dedicate his work, and Emperor Maximian I, Erasmus' Greek New Testament was published first. The Greek text on one side, Erasmus' own Latin translation on the other, and there was a third column that contained his notes. He was asked not to publish it for it showed serious error in the Latin Vulgate, and it offended and weakened the Catholic Church. His work would provide evidence of errors of the Catholic Church. Here we go. In 1520, to publish their Combustion Polygot Bible, C O M P L U T E N S I A N, Polygot Bible. Erasmus' Greek New Testament was published first in 1516, forcing the Spanish team of Cicernos, C I S N E R O S, to wait until 1520 to publish their Compulsive Polygot Bible, which was published in 1522 AD. In, 14, in 1514 AD, D'Angelo Lopez de Zingo, Z U N I G A, prepared for printing Greek texts. Support Jer Jerome and Oregon, origin, Oregon or origin. They could not raise the funds for printing until 1522 by the act of God. God set aside a little bit until all point, until that point, all scholars, educators, and all men had seven years of Erasmus work. So God held off this <clears throat> Bible. That was of uh, the Jerome and Origin, but God held that off so Erasmus' Bible could get out. The Compositionian Polygot Bible was read in light of Erasmus. Erasmus' work caused the failure of that work. In 1516, Erasmus prepares his work. In the preface, quote, would that they were translated into all languages, so that not only Scotch and Irish, but Turks and Sacrin, S-A-R-A-C-E-N-S, that's a medieval term for Arabians, might be able to read and know them. Look, so Erasmus wants to put a work out there for everybody to read. And it happens that his work made the Catholic Church look bad. It will be translated to languages and be ready by all that the farmer and the weaver will sing verses from it, Erasmus' work, while at their job. The Vulgate. And the Vulgate means the common people's language, the street language. Everybody could speak it. The second 1519 edition, the more familiar term testimonium, T-E-S-T-A-M-E-N-T-U-M, -E -E was used instead of instrumentum. This edition was used by Martin Luther in his German translation of the Bible, written for the people who could not understand Latin. So Erasmus' Bible becomes into Lutheran's Bible for the Germans. And we already read that the uh, Erasmus Bible was for the Scotch and the Irish and the Turks. And he wanted it for the Arabians. The third edition of 1522 was probably used by Tyndale for the first New, English, uh, New Testament in the English version. You got Worms, the Geneva Bible, and the King James Version of the English Bible. So we got the family, the King James Bible here, Erasmus. And we wanted to put it in the common people, the Vulgate, so farmers and weavers can sing the praises of God 
and that this work made the Catholic Church look bad, and that there was a comps comps Polgite Bible that God said, "Hey, hold off on that junk for a little while. Let's get my word of God out." But praise the Lord. Where did I leave off? I would of uh, with evidence put it in the first and into the second with the evidence, but still not full evidence of the opposition of the whole world. Doubtless, 1 John 5, 7 is in the Holy Bible included as the authority from and of the apostles. 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Now the NIV says, for the, there are three that testify. The RSV, and the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is true. Now the KJV, the King James Version of the Bible, is the Antioch family of the Bible that comes through Erasmus. The NIV and the RSV I just read to, and the countless other junk on the market, is the Alexandrian family through Origen and Jerome. So we got two families now. We got a family from Alexandria, the junk. And so this will start popping up now. And then you've got the Antioch family, which brings us to the King James to the Word of God. And the Antioch will, I mean, the, the, excuse me, excuse me, the Alexandria will give to us the, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus, and we will see the name origin with Alexandrian. But we must remember that the family of our Bible comes from Antioch. They were first called Christians in Antioch, the book of Acts says. That's important. We're, we're, we're getting to the King James Bible. Erasmus published a fourth edition in 1527, contained parallel columns. That's there's four columns <clears throat> of Greek, Latin Vulgate, and Erasmus Latin text. So he put it side by side by side. 1535, Erasmus published a fifth and final edition which dropped the Latin Vulgate column, get rid of Latin, but was otherwise similar to the fourth edition. So the fifth and final one, get rid of that Latin Vulgate. And the Vulgate was, just, again, it's the common people's language. Latin was also the official language of, of Alexandria in the Catholic Church. Later, the fifth version, of the Greek New Testament by others. But based on Erasmus' Greek New Testament, became known as the Texas Receptus. Now we're getting closer to the King James Bible. And the Texas Receptus is the received text. People in the know, they know all about it, received it to be correct and accurate not of the family of Alexandria, but the family of Antioch from Erasmus. And this was 1517 and 1530. Now there are people called the TR man. TR is short for the Texas Receptus. I'm a TR man. And they trust in the final authority is the text six receptors and the King James Bible is the best depiction depiction of the Texas receptor. So TR men, the King James Bible, it's okay, but the Texas receptors is the of all to be all to be all. I'm not a TR man. I'm a KJV. I not only use the King James Bible, but I believe the King James Bible to be written on a heavenly typewriter, I say. 
They use only King James Bible and endorse the King James Bible. We'll give them that much credit. There are there are schools and scholarship places and seminaries and, and and you know we use the King James. We also use ASV. We also use the RSV. And there is no final authority. And sometimes in in in, in lieu of the the originals, and which you can't get, which you can't find. But I am one Bible. King James 1611. Many of your seminaries, there are many Bibles, three Bibles. Critical of the modern versions and the King James only. King James is best to them, to the TR men. King James is best, but the Texas Receptus is the final authority. Stopped in 1516 with Erasmus, that is the final end of the Bible. This is what they believe the TR meant. Frame against men and women that cherish the King James Bible. So TR men will use a King James Bible, but the Texas, the Texas, the Texas Receptus, that's the one. Erasmus, in his capacity as a humanist editor, advised major printers such as Adonis. Menetus, A L D U S M A N U T I U S, on which manuscripts to publish. Now, humanist, then, then, the one that was versed in the knowledge of human nature in the Webster's 1828 dictionary. Erasmus was a humanist, and we'll look at that in a moment. He was ordained to be a Catholic priest on the 25th of April, 1492. I was saved on April 25th, 1987. But we know 1492, when the Catholic Church set off the ocean blue. Oh, uh, I think I got that wrong, didn't I? Attack the church and its practices did uh, Erasmus did. He wasn't a good Catholic. He was for, again, the Reformation, to clean the Catholic Church out of all its error and sin. He was not even sure, Erasmus was not even sure he was saved. And yet he was still used by God. So, you can't pray for the guy. He's dead. He might be in heaven. He dedicated his Bible to the Pope. He had to get the work done in the present era, when he lived. In order to get a Bible out in the era that we're reading about, it had to be endorsed by Mother Church, by the Pope. So he put a dedicatory, dedicatory page in his Bible, dedicated to the Pope, so the Pope will sign it off, and now people can have the Bible. And you sure the Pope wasn't going to read the Bible because no Pope reads the Bible. So that's the only way the Bible could get out by Erasmus, by getting the seal of the Pope. And God used George Whitfield too. Behold, all my chickens have become ducks. He was an English Anglican, I can't say that word, clergy. But in America, the Baptists and the Separatists were illegal, so God had to use George Whitfield. George Whitfield, get a job done that is illegal in America, a Christian nation. And everybody that was getting saved under George Whitfield were becoming Baptists or Separatists and they weren't becoming Anglicans. <laughs> That's a big joke by God. Here is a man in the Catholic Church, Erasmus, 
He's not a good Catholic, and his church is, is filthy and unclean, and he knows it, and he comes up with a Bible that says the Catholic church is filthy and unclean. God plays great humor into life. He ignored the Codex Vaticanus. Vaticanus. Vatic Anus would be a better name. Vatic Anus. Vatican is, is a manuscript work, a biblical work that was found in a garbage can in the, the city of the Vatican. It should have stayed in the garbage can. But the devil says, no, don't pull that in the garbage. Don't burn that work. I'll use that work for all the filthy worldly translations that are out there today. And Bible colleges and seminaries will just have romance. And the, the Vaticanus will be the, 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 the thrill and the lingerie of biblical scholars. So it divided the manuscripts as Antioch accepted and Alexandrian was rejected. Now Antioch in the Bible, in the gospel, uh, in the book of Acts, they were first called Christians at Antioch. Now we're stepping into a thing in our 12th study of the King James Bible and we must make a mark. Our Bibles the King James Bible comes from Antioch, where they were first called Christians. Remember that in the Bible. Our Bible does not come anywhere from Alexandria. Alexandria is a cult worldly Bible. And we'll look at a few names again. That will deal with this. And we're, we're, we're touching ground now. We are now in our ground of Antioch correct. Alexandrian devil. We have come across a Vatic anus. Vatic anus. I call it Vatic anus. Bible. That is not Bible. And it's the lingerie of the devil. For biblical scholars. Of Alexandrian you say, well, what's the Alexandrian? RSV, NIV, and all the other, but, but the King James Bible. The King James Bible comes from Antioch. It included scripture passages that were rejected by origin. Oregon or origin. Now, origin will be a name that is in the name of the Alexandrian rejected Bible. And if you got a per perverted, devilish Bible and all the wickedness that comes from the, the wicked Bibles, the modern Bibles, you will find that they come from, a, from the foundation of Alexandria and you will find a name associated with that work, one of the names of origin. And the origin will be lifted up in the scholarly view as somebody great and wonderful, and they're lying. Now, Erasmus, one of his brightest students was William Tyndale. Whoa, William Tyndale. I want to check, make sure. Uh, yeah, William, no, we haven't done him yet. That was John Wycliffe. All right. I hope we, we have a section of, let me check here real quick, William Tyndale. We got William Tyndale, Lord willing, coming up. Okay. I, I, know I, saw, I knew I saw his name. So, get back where we were. So, William Tyndale, what we're going to look at later, was one of the brightest students that Eurasmus had. We're going to get into a lot of names now. And we got two fields of study now. We got Antioch, where they were first called Christians, and Alexandria. Erasmus Greek text of 1522, the slight variations 
of Steve Houthanus, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-U-S, -E and I will spell out my errors. 1546, 1549, 1550, and 1551. The third edition, the third edition was an improvement of Erasmus. We're getting our way. We're on the road to the King James Bible. L. Z. River. E. L. Z. E. V. I. R. 1624, 1633. Coninius. C. O. L. I. N. A. E. U. S. And I apologize for getting the names wrong. But when you got a name like Stiley, <laughs> did I say it tonight? <laughs> Uh, 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 the first I have to say stylely. Yeah, that's Beza, Beza, B E Z A, fifteen sixty to fifteen ninety eight. Improved on Stephanus, which we read in the slight variations. So Erasmus gets to the Texas Receptus to Stephanus to Beza. To the King James 1611. That, that's a rule. That's a timetable. Jerome's Alexandrian New Testament has no value at all. Jerome's New Testament. Erasmus refused to take a cardinal's hat of the Catholic Church. He, 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 was, a, he was a priest. He was an ordained into the priesthood. And he was, he had the, the, the opportunity to become a cardinal. You're asking, the one that gave us the Bible that put the Catholic Church down, he said, I don't want that. I don't want to be a bird brain. He's an expert Greek scholar. He had opened doors to the libraries, including the library of the Vatican. And he rejected that work. The Latin translations of the New Testament of Oxford in 1505. The Latin, the Latin text manuscripts from John Colet, C-O-L-E-T, showed anti-Catholic readings of the Albigensian, A-L-B-I-G-E-N-S-I-N -E Bibles. Anything that's anything that that, that that supports God in Antioch and defiles the Catholic Church, and then you also the other Bible would be the Walt Disney Bible, A W A L D E N S I A N, and the Walt Disneys were were enemies of the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church is thought to kill and destroy the Walt Disney. That's another study. Interesting study of hardship and trials of a group of people for the word of God and for God. I get you to go and study the Walt Disney's on yourself, please. And now the argument's about the Greek text of Erasmus jeers and was hated and the arguments by the Catholic Church. Amen. It's a good Bible. Anything that the Catholic Church says, that's no good, that's, that's, <laughs> it showed the Latin Vulgate of the Catholic Church, the error that it was in. Now again, Erasmus was a humanist. He was, in the 16th century, was not a man that was, in the century was not a man that was worshipped a man. They saw high standard for humanization. They saw the oppressed of and by the Catholic Church over people. And, man, there's more value of the human life than there is the Catholic, the, the big church. The big church does not put its value on the human life that there should be. They did not treat the Bible as an authority, but they did not exclude it. And we are in an age today where the Bible is excluded from public schools. Interesting. And the motive, better his fellow men with freedom and liberties. 
Oh, where did I hear that one before? Now, he was a Roman Catholic, Erasmus. George Whitfield was an Anglican. <laughs> and God used him. And he was, as most were, excommunicated by the Mother Church Catholic. Excommunicated me. You don't belong to us. You're not part of us. And since you're not at the holy altar of the Catholic Church, and you don't take part of the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and you won't be buried in our Catholic cemetery, when you die excommunicated, you will burn in hell. Lies. Lies. And he was not a good Catholic like Luther. He attacked the church. He, Erasmus, held to sound Bible beliefs. And that ain't Catholic. When the Catholics had tradition, Erasmus said, this is what the Bible says. He dedicated his Greek New Testament to a pope. But that was the only sign and seal that would get his Bible out to the common people. Because without the popes and the church's authority, the word of God, G, was illegal. So he gave a title page to the Pope for the Pope to give him the seal and the word of God got out. Now, some may call it compromising, but I didn't live in that time and I don't know what I would have done. And after seeing what, like we studied last time, what happened to John Wycliffe, your asthmist witnessed that. Few manuscripts were used by your asthmist. And he had access to many manuscripts, but he chose the proper ones. <laughs> he had knowledge of the Codex Vaticanus, or Vaticanus, the, the manuscript that came from the garbage can of, uh, of the Vatican that should stay in the, the garbage can. But the devil said this would be great lingerie for the Bible scholars of Bible seminaries and Bible rejectors and Bible correctors. Take it out of the garbage can and let the Bible scholars put it on and tease their flesh. Wow, Sally. I know. Yeah, I know. He ignored the Codex Vaticanus. Or Vaticanus. Use four and fifth for revelation. But he used the correct and not the incorrect manuscripts. And he had the resources. Remember, he could have gone to the Vatican's library. He said, uh -uh, I don't want the devil's work. I don't want the trash. I want to put the gold in the Word of God. And silver, I want to put the silver that's tried in the furnace. Uh, he used the Antioch. They were first called Christians in Antioch. Not in Babylon. Not in Jerusalem. In Antioch. Over the Alexandrian work. Again, we want the Antioch, we don't want the Alexandrian. He had knowledge and the proper Basilian, and I'm going to say that wrong, and I apologize, B-Y-Z-A-N-T-I-N-E text. You know, you know what a scholar and an ignoramus of a brain is going to do? Ha <laughs> ha, Stalin got the names wrong. He mispronounced it, so we're not going to get it right. And Paul had all the authority and all the certification and all the marks and all the realm of a Pharisee. And on the road to Damascus, Jesus speaks to Paul and he goes, who art thou? Paul had the letter of the law, but he didn't know the Savior. 
And like I said, I'll spell the names out, and I apologize right now where I get words wrong, but there are going to be some people that are going to say they're going to use that for an excuse to say he doesn't know what he's talking about. And there are people who are going to be able to pronounce these words correctly with the right syllables and the right accent, and they don't know God. Wow, that's a bold thing. Yeah, they don't make bold statements like Stolle does. He knew the writings of the church fathers. So Erasmus had much in his fingertips. And he chose the proper work of his right hand over that that was at the left hand. was aware of the problems that they had of Mark 16, John 8, and 1 John 5. He knew that their manuscripts that don't include Mark 16, don't have John 8, and don't have 1 John 5. He knew about that. Supplied the text of the last six verses of Revelation. Erasmus published a fourth edition in 1527 containing a parallel columns of Greek, Latin Vulgate, and Erasmus Latin text. In this edition, Erasmus also supplied the Greek text of the last six verses of Revelation, which he translated from the Latin back to the Greek in his first edition. He got late manuscripts from the 12th century that was missing six verses and he wrote his own. Codex 141 has them in him. According to Edward Hills, a well-known man in name, there was access to. So Erasmus had in the Bible, he had passages that were in the Bible that others did not have. And later on, evidence were to find that Erasmus did a good job. Why? Because God is in the road of Antioch. Satan is in the road of Alexandria. 